Hello friends, in the last video we solved a 1D steady state heat conduction problem with no heat generation using finite difference method. In this video we are going to include heat generation in, in our problem by considering a source term. Our objectives are to present a 1D steady state heat conduction problem with heat generation or source term solve the problem analytically, solve the problem using finite difference method, compare the results. We will then vary the grid spacings and obtain solutions using finite difference method. Let us consider a copper bar which is 1 meter long. One end of the bar is maintained at 100 degrees Celsius. The other end of the bar is maintained at 1000 degrees Celsius. The thermal conductivity of the bar K is given as 366 watts per meter Kelvin. The heat generation per unit volume Q is given as 366,000 watts per meter cube. Let's get back to the general steady state, a general heat conduction equation in 3D Cartesian coordinates, which is given below which is uh, dou square t by dou x square plus dou square t by dou y square plus dou square t by dou z square plus g over k equals 1 over alpha dou t by dou t. Uppercase t is the temperature and, which, and is a function of the spatial coordinates x, y, z and time. Alpha is a property of the material called thermal diffusivity and is given in meter squared per second. Alpha equals K over rho C, where K is the thermal conductivity of the material in watts per meter Kelvin, rho is the density of the material in kilograms per meter cube, C is the specific heat capacity of the material in joules per kilogram Kelvin. G is the volumetric rate of internal heat generation given in watts per meter cube. Our assumptions on the material ther thermal conductivity are given below. The thermal conductivity, for example, along the x direction kx is considered constant. Likewise, the thermal conductivities along the y direction ky and the z direction kz are considered uniform. So this is a homogeneous condition. Also, the thermal conductivities at the three different directions are considered equal. That is Kx equals Ky equals Kz equals K. And this is the isotropic condition. For 1D steady state heat conduction with heat generation or source term, equation 1 reduces to a simpler form. We assume that the temperature does not vary significantly along the y or z directions when compared with the x direction. Temperature is independent of time. That is, it is, as we are considering a steady state condition. Accordingly, equation 1 becomes dou square t by dou x square plus g over x equals 0. t is a function of x. This PDE is, in fact, an ODE of the form t square t by dx square equals minus g over k. t is a function of x. g equals 366,000 watts per meter cube and k, the thermal conductivity, is 366 watts per meter Kelvin. In this particular problem, we consider g as a constant value, but g can also be a function of x. Equation 3 is a second order ODE with constant coefficients and can be easily solved. Integrating equation 3 with respect to x once, we get dt by dx equals minus g over k times x plus a. Integrating equation 4 now with respect to x once again, we get t equals minus g over k times x squared by 2 plus a times x plus b. Here a and b 
or the constants of integration. Equation 5 represents a boundary value problem. To solve equation 5, we need two boundary conditions. We have those conditions in this particular case. At x equals 0, t equals t and 1, which is 100 degrees Celsius. And at x equals 1 meter, t equals t and 2, which is 1000 degrees Celsius. Substituting the boundary conditions into equation 5, we can solve for the unknowns A and B. Accordingly, equation 5 becomes t of x equals minus 1000 times x squared by 2 plus 1400 times x plus 100. The above problem is a simpler problem and hence we are able to solve this analytically. Many complex problems cannot be solved easily analytically and we need to resort to numerical methods. Here we utilize finite difference method to solve the above heat conduction problem. What does finite difference method do? To put it briefly, finite difference method converts the differential equations to algebraic equations. We can then solve the algebraic equations using available methodologies to obtain solutions. Before we use finite difference method, we need to understand Taylor series expansion of continuous functions. See below some very brief information on the Taylor series, which is an infinite series expansion of any function. f of x plus delta x equals f of x plus f dash of x times delta x plus f double dash of x times delta x squared by 2 factorial and so on. Likewise, f of x minus delta x equals f of x minus f dash of x times delta x plus f double dash of x times delta x squared by 2 factorial and so on. Equation 8 is obtained by replacing delta x in equation 7 by negative delta x. Equation 7 is called the forward Taylor series expansion and equation 8 is called the backward Taylor series expansion. Note that delta x is a fraction and is a small has a small value. Hence, delta x squared, delta x cubed and the other powers of delta x get smaller and smaller and hence the terms associated with them can be ignored in general. Adding equations 7 and 8 and truncating after the second derivative terms, we get f of x plus delta x plus f of x minus delta x equals 2 times f of x plus f double dash of x times delta x squared by delta x squared and f double dash of x equals f of x minus delta x minus 2 times f of x plus f of x plus delta x by delta x squared. Equation 9 is the centered difference approximation of the second derivative term obtained using the Taylor series approximation. Now let's get it back to our governing equation that is equation 3 t double dash of x which is d square t by dx square equals minus g over k and t is a function of x t at x equals 0 is t and 1 t at x equals l it equals t and 2 note g over k is 366,000 by 366 equals 1000 now let's replace the second order derivative using finite different approximation we then get ti minus 1 minus 2 times ti plus ti plus 1 by delta x square equals negative 1000. Simplifying, we get ti minus 1 minus 2 times ti plus ti plus 1 equals minus 1000 times delta x square. Equation 11 is the finite difference approximation of the original equation which we are trying to solve. Here i represents the node location on the discretized domain. The finite difference stencil is given below. Now let us discretize the 1D domain into five segments or grid spacings equally spaced as shown below from one to six. In this case, delta x equals 
the total length L divided by the number of segments M. So equals 1 over 5 equals 0 0.2 meters. Note, temperatures at node 1 and node 6 are known and these are the boundary conditions. To apply equation 11, we need to consider the interior nodes 2 to 5. Let I equals 2, equation 11 now becomes T1 minus 2T2 plus T3 equals negative 1000 times 0 0.2 square. Here delta x is 0 0.2. This gives us T1 minus 2 times T2 plus T3 equals negative 40. Similarly, for I equals 3, 4, 5, we get <coughs> T2 minus 2 times T3 plus T4 equals negative 40 and so on. Since T1 and T6 are known, we can move them to the right hand side of the equations. The equations are rearranged as shown below. Let's put these equations into a matrix form so it can be solved easily. So the unknowns T2 to T5 can be solved using methods such as Thomas algorithm or other methods such as gauss seidel successive over relaxation etc solving the above equation using thomas algorithm on matlab produces the following results t2 equals 360 degrees celsius t3 equals 580 degrees celsius t4 equals 760 degrees celsius and t5 equals 900 degrees celsius since this problem is easier to solve analytically we are able to get the exact solution using analytical methods and in this particular case the exact solution matches the solution obtained using finite difference method and we will run this program in matlab and we can look at the graphical results as well this is our 1d steady state heat conduction problem with heat generation in MATLAB and the number of segments in M equals 5. Let's run this program and we have the exact temperatures obtained analytically as 360 degrees Celsius, 580 degrees Celsius, 760 degrees Celsius and 900 degrees Celsius at the different points. X is equal to equals 0 0.2, X equals 0 0.4, X equals 0 0.6 and X equals 0 0.8. And we have the solutions obtained numerically using finite difference method. In this particular case, the numerical method gives and uh, the numerical method and the analytical methods they give the exact solutions and there is the error is zero in the finite difference method the reason being this is a second order taylor series approximation in the finite difference method and our exact solution is of the order of x squared so we are able to get the exact solution in this case. Let's run. Uh, let's look at the graphical results uh, here. And we can run. We can run the program again by changing the number of segments from m equals 5 to say m equals 1000. And let's save this. Uh, program and rerun the program. Now we get graphical results like shown here. So the temperature at one end is 100 degrees C and the other end is at 1000 degrees Celsius and the temperature profile along the length of the bar is given below. The color bar gives the scale temperature scale and let's go back 
to our PowerPoint. So, in summary, we presented a 1D steady state heat conduction problem with heat generation. We solved the problem analytically and using finite difference methods. We compared the results. We reran the program using smaller grid, space, grid spacings and we presented the results. In future video, we can explore more challenging problems. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. Thank you for watching the video.